What's going on, my Arsenal fans, my Mesut Ozil lovers? My name is Poet and this is Arsenal Nation. Now, every time we do this show, we get some guests in. Today's no different. He's back again. His name, Robbie from Arsenal Fan TV. Round of applause, please. In a circle, people. Good to be in back. Good to be back. And he's in back. Build it. <laughs> <laughs> We've also got oh, yeah, a young man from Football Daily. Love that channel. Love this guy. Mr. Patrick, what's going on, son? Good to see you, man. Thanks for having me. Look, he shares the name of a great Mr. Vieira. Now, today, we're going to be speaking about various different things. We're going to kick on and speak about the carpet, a.k.a. the Emirates, a.k.a. my real home. The question is this, though. What do you put our form down to at the Emirates Stadium? What's it all down to? Why are we sometimes a little bit off key? Talk to me, Patrick. What's going on in the Emirates? I think that there are some nerves there. I think that sometimes we struggle because teams come and they know that they've just got to sit deep and try and frustrate us. We see these teams bunker and it's really difficult to get through. Alexis Sanchez has been a little bit off form. Santi Cazorla has been out injured. And Mesa Ozil is the only one with that extreme playmaking elite quality. So I think that's why we've been a little bit better when we've had a Wobi or Campbell. We need that passer who can take some of the pressure off Ozil and stop teams trying to mark him out of the game. Well, Ertzul, a.k.a. God, he's been phenomenal this season. A lot of pressure is on his shoulders. But then surely the fans have a responsibility to sort of try and lift some of that pressure. Robbie, do we do that? You go to every single game. Yeah, listen, you know what? We need a bit of what the away fans bring to the home fans. Um, is that sometimes our fans, we get to games, really, you know, we, we can get frustrated very quickly if it doesn't go for us. And there's been a lot of frustrating games this season. I mean, the amount of shots, actually, that we've had on target has been amazing, right? But we just haven't scored the goals. And it's like every keeper that seems to come to the Emirates this season has turned into Buffon. I mean, <laughs> as soon as they get there, I don't know where they get this form from. I mean... You know, they're pulling off worldy after... I mean, how many keepers this season have been man of the match when they've come to the Emirates? It's been ridiculous. They're up for it when they come to the Emirates. It's a beautiful stadium with beautiful people. But what <laughs> else can we possibly contribute to make it more of an intimidating atmosphere? I don't know if you've ever been to Turkey. I went to the Galatasaray game. Mate, I was scared and I was with my mate and we were all friends and I was scared of them. <laughs> that is how intimidating it is. What can we do as fans to try and make more of an atmosphere? And even ask, what can we do, Patrick? Well, perhaps we need singing sections. Perhaps we need a song to come out to. You'll never walk alone. That really sets the tone for Liverpool games. Maybe if we come out to a song, maybe something like that can put the fear of God in our opponents. And that's what should happen. Teams who come to the Emirates should know that they're in for a horrible afternoon, that they're going to get battered. Look at that. A song. Imagine coming out to a song like The Rock or Stone Cold Steve Austin. What <laughs> song could we come out to, though, Robbie? What could be the song where we strike fear into our opponents where they're like, do you know what, mate? I'm going home. We've got a few celebrity Arsenal fans. What about Drake? He's an Arsenal fan. Oh. Get Drake to put a tune together. You know what I mean? Get us coming out, bouncing onto that pitch. Okay, all right. So one bit of advice just to close it with from Robbie and Patrick on what contribution can be made so we make it an intimidating atmosphere. Listen, let's just sing our hearts out every game. The players, let's just connect. You know, I, I, I love the fact that um, at the end of games we're, this season where you see Mertesacker and Theo and they come up at the end and they jump up and do that little thing. You know, let's be one club. You know what I mean? Fans and players be one club and then we can turn this place into a fortress and anybody who comes here, they will be fearful of coming to the Emirates, not just because it's a beautiful ground, but they'll be fearful because they know they're going to get turned over. I think we, I don't know, Gunnosaurus with a flamethrower, maybe, <laughs> maybe a cannon it's pointing dangerous, at Patrick. the keeper. <laughs> a cannon oh. pointing at the keeper, the Jurassic Park theme tunes of Gunnosaurus, something like that. Jurassic Park, water shaking <laughs> and all sorts. Look, leave loads and loads of comments about what you feel we could do as fans and as even the players to make it a more intimidating atmosphere and comments about absolutely anything else you've heard as well. All right, time to move on to social lives. And guess what? We've got the fan's favorite himself, Mr. Jackie Wilshire. It's on my phone. So on that Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I'm, I'm on it quite a lot. My weapon of choice on social is probably Instagram. My best follow on Instagram at the moment is probably Conor McGregor. If there was one person I could get to follow me, it would probably be, again, Conor McGregor. If there's one person I should recommend everyone follow, it would have to be Kevin Hart. He's hilarious. Now it's time to see what you guys think of me. Just woke up and uh, I miss Santi Cazorla and Jack Wilshire so much. Not as much as I miss them. <laughs> Lilana wants to be Jack Wilshire so bad. 
start on people twice his size. <laughs> um, it, mm, as if I've just taken a piss next to at Jack Wilshire in a service <laughs> station. <laughs> God, lucky he didn't take a picture. Jack Wilshire is the biggest fraud since Frederico Makeda. He done all right, no? A man said about Jack Wilshire coming on and stepping to man. That Russell, you know. <laughs> I don't even understand that. Wilshire's a baller fan. We miss you. <laughs> Jack Wilshire, forgot he even exists. Massively overrated. Living off that Barca game when he was 18. Rage kid as well. <laughs> God, I thought I was liked. Jack Wilshire is better than your mum. <laughs> Rah, Jack Wilshire came to Asda. <laughs> so I shop. Who would you rather punch in the face? Jack Wilshire or Piers Morgan? Aaron? <laughs> Oh, everyone loves a little bit of Jack. Can't wait to have him back. Love you, Jack Wilshire. He come from our youth policy, and that gets into our next topic very, very well. I'm asking Robbie, I'm asking Patrick, how important, how integral is Arsenal's youth policy to you? To you, Patrick, what does it mean? It means a little bit, but not as much as the team's success. You know, the players that I love are the players who are world class. And it doesn't matter to me whether they came through the academy or whether we bought them in. What matters is that we play well and we play in the Arsenal style. I want to see commitment to the club, but that doesn't only need to come from local kids. It but that, can come wait, from wait, anyone. I'll stop you. Doesn't that sound like short term thinking? Surely the long term goal at Arsenal should be to develop these youngsters that come in and play for the club. They've been there since they were 10 years old. Their dad used to take them. Don't you agree, Robbie? You know what, Poet, I don't often agree with you, but you're spot on on this one. I love, <laughs> I love the fact that you've got players coming through the youth team that make it to the first team. There's nothing fans love more than to see a player come through. We've seen recently with Alex Iwobi, you know, it's just great to see talent coming through. And you know what I like at Arsenal? We give young kids a chance. We had a little spell where we were giving loads of youngsters a chance. The Vellas, the Cesc Fabregas, and we didn't win much. Now we've made some big signings, we've won some trophies. Patrick, surely there needs to be the right balance. Yeah, a bit of youth and a bit of experienced players as well. Balance is absolutely the word. We can't just chuck these guys in because there's an injury crisis. We can't just promote them for any old reason. These guys have got to be good enough. We have to make sure that the team is right and that you buy in if you need to buy in. We can't end up giving one guy a bunch of chances just because he's a local kid. I like it when they come through as well, but it's not the only thing that matters. See, look at Barcelona. Look how many kids have come. Messi, they didn't buy him, remember, for like 500 million. He came through the EU system. And that's why, one of the reasons why he's still there at the club, because he's got the club in his heart, he loves the club, and he wants to do the best for the club, and he wants to stay at the club. And that is why it's good to bring these kids through, because they've got Arsenal through and through in them. They want to do the best, and they want to stay there. We don't have the advantage that Barcelona have where they have a monopoly almost on northern Spain, except for the Basque country, and when they can pilfer these kids from South America, which, by the way, is now causing problems for them. We are in London, and un unfortunately, there are actually some other teams in London. Now, I don't want to use their names, uh, you know, on a family show, but <laughs> they do, exi but they do exist. Tactic. They do exist, and we have to compete with them for these quality youngsters. Give us a player of each that you feel is one of the most exciting young players coming through at Arsenal. Patrick! It's got to be Jeff, Jeff Ren Adelaide. He looks like a quality player. He's a great little playmaker and decision making at a young age. It's pretty hard to find, but it looks like he's got it. You know what? I was going to say Jeff, but I'm going to go for, <laughs> I'm going to go for um, Zella Lim, who's on loan at Rangers. Ooh. This guy's a baller. He is a proper baller and a top prospect for us, so watch out for him. Look, leave a comment and let us know who you think is the most exciting player coming through. Now it's time to move on to a player that I love and admire. We signed him in January, and as well as having Patrick and Robbie here, we've also got the president of the Singapore Supporters Club, Mr. Jin. Where are you, son? Where are you, son? Hi there. How are Morning, you? Guys. Good, good. How are you guys doing? Now, today we're going to discuss El Nene or El Nino. Or El Nini don't like it. Now, what is your first impressions of this player, Jin? Talk to me. Oh, it's great, man. I mean, we love, uh, we watch him here in the middle of the night, so it gets a little bit boring. We're tired. And uh, <laughs> he, he's a bright spark. I mean, he just, you know, gets the ball, he runs, and he takes, a, he takes a shot. How often have we seen that recently? Not very often, right? I mean, we tend to do 
lateral passes, it kind of fizzles out. But, you know, he, he grabs the ball, he goes and he takes a shot. As well as that game uh, against Barcelona, you get good reviews against Spurs as well. Patrick, is that the type of player you feel that will come in and stay in the side even when Sandy Cazola's back? Uh, I don't know if he'll push Cazorla out of the team. Um, I think our centre-backs are really going to love playing with him, though, because he offers intelligent movement. He's always available for a pass. There are very few players in our squad who do that, really. Maybe only Arteta's the other one. Um, and he, I think he needs to improve his distribution off his left foot. He's pretty one-footed at the moment. But I really like that he's constantly in motion and he just helps his teammates out. That's what we need. Jim, so as Arsenal fans, should we be acceptant of this? Should we be happy with El Nene? Or should we be trying to get in a player that could possibly dominate the middle of the park? Yeah, I'd like to get someone who can dominate. I mean, we've really hurt since uh, Patrick Vieira left. Uh, it's been pretty obvious. We need a tall, big, strong guy. You know, uh, I think of like Yaya Toure in Man City. Uh, tall, strong, you know, he really charges forward. We need somebody like that. You're hearing this, Robbie? Jin saying we need someone like Yaya Torre. So why are we happy with El Nene? Why are we happy, Robbie? Convince me, please. Yeah, listen, top poet, give the guy a chance, man. He's only just come, right? And you know what? All this big money thing. Look at that guy, Kante, N'Golo Kante, who's playing for Leicester. He's not seven foot tall. And he didn't cost a load of money. And for me, he's been the best defensive midfielder in the Premier League this season. So, El Nene, I think we found a little gem there. Listen, I'm not saying he's going to be um, the answer to our defensive midfield problems. But I definitely think we found ourselves a top quality player there who's going to improve and get a lot better. So, I, I, I see good things for this guy. Hey, Jin, give us one word to describe this fantastic player. Hard working. Hard working. Robbie, talk to me. His nickname, mate, El Nino. And Patrick, to conclude? Dynamic. Dynamic. Well, first of all, round of applause to Jin. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolute Thank hero, bruv. And that's all we've got time for here at Arsenal Nation. So make sure you leave in comments about everything you have seen today. And if you've got any questions to pose to us, pose them in the comment section. And who knows, we could be talking about it next time round. Anyway, I've been Poet. These lot have been the wonderful Arsenal fans. Take care. Love you. Meza Ozil. Wake up, Ozil. Meza Ozil. I just don't think you understand. Well, you love that? You're going to love this.